All right, welcome back to Lightroom Classic 2020, and today we're going to take a look at HDR. Now, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. So what does High Dynamic Range mean? To explain high dynamic range, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a look at this image. Now, this was just an image that I shot for this tutorial, mainly because this flower is white and I could do something specific to it to kind of explain it. This is a single capture from my camera, meaning I went over, took one frame, did not edit it, did not do anything. This is the straight out of the camera picture from my image. A camera can only capture a certain dynamic range. So what does dynamic range mean? So we're gonna come over here to Photoshop and we're gonna look at this grayscale. Dynamic range is how much range the camera can capture from pure white, pure black. Now, if we were to break this grayscale up into little steps going from a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, Let's say a normal camera can only capture 20 shades of gray, which is not true, but we're just gonna do that. So if we subdivided this into 20 different sections, that's all this camera could capture. High dynamic range does something a little bit different. It extends that. It extends the ability from white to black of how much that camera can capture. And the way it does it a varying exposure, and then it takes the variance in exposures and puts them all together. So let's come over here to Lightroom and take a look at some variance of exposures. Now, if you've never heard of bracketing on the camera, this is something you might wanna take a look at. Bracketing is the idea that the first image you take is the normal correct exposure. Then after that, gonna take two images that are darker, and two images that are lighter than your normal exposure. You can set this for your camera to automatically do it, or you could automatically do it yourself. Usually when I bracket, I bracket by full stop. So I am under and over exposing by full stops. In this case, I did five exposures. This first image right here that we see is my normal exposure. Now it looks dark because what I did in this image is this is what the light looked like normal. And to sort of explain this, I actually stood in front of the camera to block a lot of the light that was hitting in this. Well, what does that do? To hold highlight values in this image, it makes this area very dark. Well, this image isn't gonna look very good like this. Well, why? Because the camera doesn't have enough dynamic range to hold the subtle value changes in this area of the image. So what the camera did here is this is two stops darker. This is one stop darker. This is one stop brighter than my normal exposure. And this is two stops brighter than my normal exposure. So what's the camera gonna do in HDR dynamic range? Well, it's gonna take this overexposed image, and why is this overexposed? Because this is too bright, but it's not holding the highlight values. In photography, you always wanna hold your highlight values, otherwise they've just become pure white and they don't look. So this is actually, even though it looks dark, the correct exposure, because we're holding the highlight values here, that is important, so that's my normal exposure. This exposure and this exposure are actually the exact same. Well, why do they look different? Well, that's because in this exposure, I stood in front of the light and blocked it off. And only this little area was getting illuminated. So what is HDR gonna do? Well, in this area, it's gonna use this for our highlight areas, this darker area, so we can have detail in our highlight areas. Same thing with this darker one, it's gonna use this for highlight detail. However, when we're overexposing, it's gonna be used this area to bring in more detail in the shadow areas. And then this one, once again, you can see the flowers look so much better here. Well, it's gonna use this area 
to bring in more detail for the highlight areas. Now it's blowing out flowers. Why? Well, because the dynamic range of the camera can't hold this value in this value. It's too great for one exposure. The camera is gonna combine the good aspects of all the image into one file, and that file is gonna be an HDR, high dynamic range file. And it's really easy inside of Lightroom Classic to do this. I will say you have a whole lot more control in Photoshop over this. You can still do HDR inside of Lightroom and it's gonna give you a dramatically better image. So we're gonna go on over to Photo Mechanic because I have a couple images here that were shot in where they used HDR. So we have this image inside of this theater. If you were to take one exposure of this image, there's no way you could get this even lighting and have areas that weren't totally blown out and areas that weren't in total shadow. So what they did is they shot this in HDR. This gives it an extended dynamic range. It's really easy to tell an HDR photo. A lot of times people do this weird dynamic contrast where they add a lot of contrast and sharpness to give an effect to HDR. That's just an effect with HDR, but you can shoot a totally normal image in HDR. You also have two ways you can shoot or photograph HDR. One, a lot of cameras actually shoot in HDR. Not a fan shooting HDR in camera because some cameras only take the photos in JPEG. Well, why? Because the camera processor has to process that into an HDR file. The problem with shooting a JPEG is you only get eight bits of information instead of 16 bits. You're gonna get a far superior, not even close, HDR image shot in 16-bit versus 8-bit files. So I would always say if you wanna shoot HDR, do not do it in camera. Always do it inside of Lightroom. Go on to the next one here. So we have this kind of backlit image. Normally this picture of this girl, she would be in complete shadow. There's no way a camera could hold the values of the sky and the sun coming in and shadow detail in one image. This is an HDR image. And here is a landscape in which we take in this and you can see there's just no way a normal single exposure could ever hold the highlight to shadow detail in this image. Now there's a couple factors that can ruin an image shot in HDR. Factor number one, you need to use a tripod or keep your camera pretty still when you do this. Can you shoot handheld without a tripod? Yes, you can use an auto line feature. Is it perfect? No, but it's always an option. I find it easier if you do not have a tripod to either prop your camera up on something or do something like that. Bracketing is helpful when shooting HDR. However, you can manually do your exposures. I would normally say the best thing to change in your exposure is your shutter speed, not your aperture or ISO. You do not want to change your depth of field because that's going to affect the way the image looks. We want that depth of field to be the same throughout the images. You have to make sure that you have the ability to do an under and over exposure at your set speeds. So if your shutter speed is at 15th of a second, a handheld up, well, it's not gonna work because you don't have the ability to go any slower because you're just gonna blur your image and that's not gonna work. You need to make sure that you're in an area where you can achieve the under and over exposure with your camera. We're getting a waterfall effect here and, and that's okay. Generally, you don't want items moving inside of your image. Now, occasionally when you're shooting a landscape, it's windy, and in my case, it was windy. There's a feature inside of HDR called ghosting, and what it does is it tries to remove that subtle movement that's caused by wind, like grass or leaves or something blowing, and we'll take a look at that when we get inside of HDR. This is what high dynamic range looks like, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over here to Lightroom and show you how to do this. So this is our original file, and there's nothing wrong with this, but then we're assuming that all of a sudden something came in front of our image here, and now all we have is this image. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to select all five of these images. So I'm going to hit shift click because these are the five images that we want to work with. I'm going to switch on over to the develop module inside of Lightroom. And then we're going to come up here to photo. And then we're going to go to photo merge. And then we have HDR panorama and HDR panorama. So you can shoot a panoramic image and do HDR at the same time, but we're just going to use HDR and it's going to bring up a different panel and it takes a second here. It needs to a preview after it aligns all these images. So you'll notice by default auto align is on. I don't actually need auto align because I use a tripod, nothing moved. So auto line isn't needed in this image. That's probably taking up some time in creating this preview. But if you are worried or you did move your camera a little bit, you can use auto line to kind of put those pictures so they line up perfectly one on top of the other. The second thing that we have here is auto settings. So auto settings is automatically kind of developing or making the image look how the computer thinks it should look. It's just like hitting auto tone on your computer. I could come in here and turn auto settings off and it's giving me a different image. Well, why is it giving me a different image? Because I'm not putting any of the settings using this HDR. So now you can see this HDR files brought a whole lot more detail back in the flower of this image. Plus it's able to hold that highlight detail. Here is the de ghost. If you do have wind in, in images are moving, you're going to see this weird ghosting effect. And it could be in the sky. If the clouds are moving fast, blowing leaves. And basically all you need to do is click on this and it's going to help identify what's moving and give you a cleaner image. The last thing that we have here is that you can create a stack and a stack would be all these files put on top of each other. In this case, I'm not going to create a stack. Once you've put all those files together, you can just come down here, hit merge, and it's going to merge all those files automatically into one file to give you one main HDR file. And it's usually going to have a different extension. So it's going to have, instead of 159 here, it's going to add dash HDR. So you know that that's an HDR file. We'll give it here a second to kind of go through the process. There we go. We can come down here. This is our new file. You can see it's dash HDR. So we know this is an HDR file. And you can see it's combined all the good aspects of those images, but it was able to bring out a whole lot more detail where we lost it because the shadow was hitting this area. But that is the basics of how to actually use HDR inside of Lightroom Classic 2020. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.